think of Chicago, what words come to mind? Windy City? Deep dish pizza? Yeah, that's for tourists. For the people who live here, they say Chicago, you think, tough. Fighters, champions. I'm not about to settle for less than what I expect. Pedal to the metal, I come hard and command respect. What I want is what I get. Good things come to those who sweat. I just do my thing. That's why these teams will feel right at home tonight. Kentucky, young again and hungry like always, with Coach Cal at the controls. Duke, defending champs, a legacy to live up to with Coach K in command. This is my town, the perfect place for the Champions Classic. Welcome to the State Farm Champions Classic. A great night of college basketball coming your way from the United Center here in Chicago. It begins with the defending national champion Duke Blue Devils and a Final Four team from a year ago, the Kentucky Wildcats. Kansas, Michigan State still to come. How much fun is tonight going to be? Hi, everybody, and welcome to the United Center. Dan Shulman and Jay Billis. Really glad you're with us for what should be an incredible doubleheader. Duke and Kentucky both had great years last year. Both have lost a lot, but as we've come to expect in college hoops, Jay, both have really reloaded. The number one and number two recruiting classes in the country. I mean, this is a big-time game, and there's big-time talent on the floor. We're basically looking essentially at the NBA draft green room. <laughs> These guys are big-time talent, but more importantly, they're, they're, they're ready for the stage, I think. Their maturity is as great as their talent for freshmen. And it's not just about the freshmen. Both of these teams have extremely talented sophomores, Grayson Allen for Duke and Tyler Eulis for Kentucky. Well, Grayson Allen from Duke, the hero of last year's NCAA championship game. He's averaging 27 points a game in his first two. Good off the dribble. He plays with abandon, not reckless abandon, but abandon. Just got a tremendous motor and plays hard all the time. And his counterpart from Kentucky is Tyler Eulis, another sophomore, the eighth leading scorer on last year's Kentucky. Kentucky team, but the leading returning score from Kentucky, that's how much turnover they've had. The question is for him, can he be disruptive defensively for 40 minutes because he's one of the best defenders in the country? Both of these teams have played already, but Jay, a big step up in competition level tonight. The lights are on. This is going to be a great test for both teams. Duke and Kentucky, that pretty much tells you all you need, and both teams with big hopes for this season. The lineup's coming up momentarily. Time now for the National Anthem. Let's send you to the PA announcer here at the United Center, Gene Honda. Where the nice colors are proudly presented by the Air Force Academy High School Color Guard from Chicago, Illinois. And we actually remain standing while we honor America and celebrate its freedom and those who protect it with the singing of our National Anthem. And here to sing the Star Spangled Banner, please welcome singer-songwriter Dan Hennig. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam Whose broad streets and bright stars through the pale so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh, oh say does that suspend Dan Henning, 
and the Air Force Academy High School Color Guard. Getting ready for the starting lineups here at the United Center. Gene Honda will take you through them. Duke and Kentucky in the first game of the State Farm Champions Classic from a sold-out United Center here in Chicago. Let's go back to Gene Honda now for the introduction of the starting lineups. The State Farm Champions Classic. Our first game features the Kentucky Wildcats and the Duke Blue Devils. And now let's meet our starting lineups for tonight's first game. That guard for Kentucky, a 5'9 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois. Number three, Tyler Hewless. That guard for Duke, a 6'5 sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Number three, Grayson Allen. That guard for Kentucky, a 6'3 freshman from Newark, New Jersey, number 13, Isaiah Briscoe. That guard for Duke, a 6'5 junior from DeSoto, Texas, number 13, Matt Jones. That guard for Kentucky, a 6'4 freshman from Kitchener, Canada, number 23, Jamal Murray. And forward for Duke, a 6'9 freshman from Kinston, North Carolina, number 14, Brandon Ingram. At board for Kentucky, a 6'9 junior from Antioch, California, double zero, Marcus Lee. At board for Duke, a 6'9 senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 21, Emil Jefferson. At board for Kentucky, a 6'11 freshman from Port-au-Prince, Haiti, number one, Scal Lebissier. And a center for Duke, a seven foot graduate student from Warsaw, Indiana, number 40, Marshall Plumley. The head coach of Kentucky is John Calipari. And the head coach of Duke is Mike Krzyzewski. So there you have it, the starting lineups, including a lot of fresh faces, a very talented freshman who will play tonight here in Chicago. For more on tonight's big game, let's bring in Shannon Spade. Hey there, Dan. You know, when I spoke with Mike Krzyzewski and John Calipari today, they both used the same word, learn. They said, I have to learn my team, because as you guys have already mentioned, there's a ton of talent on both of these teams, but there's not a whole lot of experience. In fact, of the players that are here today, Duke has just 87 combined starts. Kentucky's even lower than that at 62, and truly this will be their first test of the season. Matt Jones, guard for Duke, he told me as a veteran, it is his responsibility to help these guys calm down a little bit. He said, I know there's going to be some wide eyes. I just have to remember to tell them to have fun and enjoy the moment. All right, Shannon, thank you. And let's see how these young players step up. For many of them, this will be the biggest game they have ever played in. There are some more experienced players. You see the likes of Matt Jones, Emil Jefferson, Marshall Plumley taking the court for Duke, and of course Grayson Allen, the sophomore who broke out at the end of last season. Let's look now at tonight's Sonic Showdown with Kentucky leading the overall rivalry 11 to 9, but Duke has won seven of the last eight, including a win in the Champions Classic three years ago in Atlanta. 
basketball royalty on both ends of the court and more to come with the second game tonight between Kansas and Michigan State. What are you looking for? What's one of the keys, Jay, heading into this one? Well, one of the keys is going to be driving the basketball. Both teams like to spread the floor and put the ball on the deck. If you can guard your man and stay in front, that keeps you out of rotation and out of scramble. And Kentucky with the first possession of the night. Both teams are 2-0 and on the young season, but both are facing a much tougher team than they have faced so far. Right out of the gate, Jamal Murray being guarded by Brandon Ingram. That is a lot of length on Murray. He's 6'5 and an excellent offensive player. Ingram is 6'9, two of the most hyped freshmen in college basketball this year. The screen by Scott LeBissier. And now Murray with a shot clock down to three. He will drive and lay it in. Well, just so easy. And you're going to see Kentucky try to reverse the ball. And they're going to put it on the deck. And they are going to put their head down and drive and make Duke rotate. That's going to open up the offensive glass. Murray, the freshman from Kitchener, Ontario, had a huge performance at the Nike Hoop Summit this past summer. Emil Jefferson won't take that long jumper. Grayson Allen will take the three in and out all over the glass of the Blue Devils and it's Marshall Plumley with a put back. Boy, the offensive glass is going to be a big factor on both ends of the floor and Emil Jefferson and Marshall Plumley are excellent offensive rebounds. Marshall Plumley averaging over two a game. Emil Jefferson six and a half offensive rebounds a game so far. Isaiah Briscoe, LaBissiere is fouled by Jefferson. Kentucky continuing to drive the ball. Rotations early on, a bit slow for Duke. They're going to have to remedy that. At first, you want to stay in front of the ball, but that's almost impossible to do with as good a drivers as Kentucky has got. They play basically three point guards. Isaiah Briscoe, Jamal Murray, and Tyler Eulis are all point guards. So here is LeBissier from Haiti. And like so many in that nation, his home devastated by the earthquake some years ago moved to the United States attended high school in Memphis you can see the number two overall recruit in the ESPN 100 what do people really have to know about his game well he's very skilled and he can shoot it so he can step away if he sets a screen he can actually play pick and pop basketball so when you're taking away the drive they can throw back and he's a guy that can knock down a perimeter jump shot Kentucky downing or icing the ball screen on the right side Allen 54 points in Duke's first two games this year against Siena and Bryan and Mike Krzyzewski has said often were it not for his performance in the national championship game they would not have won that game. Well, he had 16 points in 21 minutes and I think he scored eight straight at one point in that game and you know, Mike Krzyzewski also said that one play where he dove on the floor for a loose ball might have been one of the, the best plays he's seen as the Duke head coach. The fouls on Marcus Lee, his first. Inbounded to Allen, who's just named the ACC Player of the Week. A rejection by Lee. Numbers for Kentucky. Eulis. LaBissiere with a slam. Well, you turn the ball over in this game. Your offense has to help your defense. And if you turn it over, you are starting a break. That's the first pass in your opponent's fast break. Nobody called that screen out for Tyler Eulis. He got nailed by Jefferson. And Jay, the Duke starting lineup really without a true point guard, but the coaching staff believes that all three perimeter players, Jones, Allen, and even Ingram, can initiate the offense. Ingram misses the three. Long rebound. And the Duke player's a little bit slow getting to that loose ball. Murray with the handoff and the lay-in for Briscoe. Well, you better get a loose ball because Kentucky's leaking out early. If you can get the loose ball from Kentucky, you got a chance to get an easy basket. Otherwise, they're getting the easy one by leaking out early and going the other way. And Kentucky has bolted out to an early five-point lead here in Chicago. Down in the ball screen and good reversal. This is Jones. Shot clock at 10. Kentucky really staying in front effectively, trying to make Duke shoot over the top. Jefferson can't finish. Offensive rebound again. Plumley, and he's got both baskets tonight for the Blue Devils. Whenever you get two guys going after a block shot, you better block it because it's going to open up the offensive glass if you don't. Eulis will have a huge role on this Kentucky team this year. Expected to be one of the top point guards in America. How about the reverse by Isaiah Briscoe, the freshman from Union, New Jersey? A great drive, but a poor closeout by Brandon Ingram. Just got caught flat-footed, and Briscoe just drove right past him. Ingram keeping the dribble alive, guarded by Murray. Allen trying to turn the corner on Briscoe. Gets it off the glass, too strong, and look who's on the glass again. It's the Marshall Plumley show so far for Duke. 
Best offense for Duke has been a missed shot. Now turnover from Kentucky. Marcus Lee not expecting a pass off his shoulder into the backcourt. Kentucky has been getting to the basket at will on their offensive end, and Marshall Plumley has been getting offensive rebounds at will. Grayson Allen trying to get a, a foul call, doesn't get it. Nobody puts a body on Marshall Plumley. It's three offensive boards for the big guy. First substitution for Mike Krzyzewski, Derek Thornton, freshman to point guard. Wearing number 12 will come into the game, so Duke has gone smaller as Jefferson has gone to the bench. And Alex Poitras, back from the torn ACL a year ago, has checked in for the first time tonight for Kentucky. John Calipari talking to Alex Poitras just about playing like an elite athlete. Another offensive board. Plumley again and a chance for three. Kentucky is just watching the ball when it goes up on the backboard. There is very little physicality on the part of the UK big guys. Plumley just took Scal LaBissiere right down the lane and just discarded him. Got him on the underside and was able to just knock him out of the way. That was the strength of Plumley against the finesse and athleticism of LaBissiere. LaBissiere called for the foul. Plumley has all nine points for Duke. Less than four minutes into the game. His career high is 12. And he's already got nine tonight. Briscoe out of control, blocked by Plumley, And it eventually bounces into the hands of Jones. A lot of body contact, but the players are keeping their hands off each other. It's been a, a hard played game. It's certainly not. There's a lot of physicality, which is good. Nothing wrong with physical. Ingram baseline drive on Poitras, and the offensive foul on the freshman. Drop that shoulder. Great job by Poitras to take the charge. We will step aside for the first time tonight. A good start here in Chicago with a wild pass for the Blue Devils. Tied at nine. Freshman to feed on Scal LeBissier with a dunk for the Wildcats. Marshall Plumley dominant on the interior for the Blue Devils. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. And Gildan. Every thread counts. Well, what a year it was for the Duke Blue Devils last year. 35 and 4, 15 and 3 in the league, and then of course, all the way to the national championship, beating Wisconsin in the title game, earning a visit to the White House, having some fun, posing for some pictures, but then losing so much from that incredible team, including the three great freshmen, Okafor, Winslow Jones, and also Quinn Cook, who had an outstanding year as a senior so it's a it's a team with a lot of new faces and it's a team Jay where some of the returning faces need to step up and assume larger roles than they did last year and that leads us to Marshall Plum. Well who predicted that Marshall Plumley would score nine straight in this one? <laughs> Out of the gate what a tremendous job that he's done getting second shots when Kentucky has their first shot defense has been good you give up those easy second ones and it puts you in a little bit of trouble. So he's got all nine tonight Grayson Allen switching off on Jamal Murray. He's a guy that can get hot in a hurry. And he buries the three. Kentucky back on top. And Murray just coming off those baseline screens. Gets his feet set quickly. He is a big time talent. Grayson Allen with a full head of steam, rejected. I think it was Isaac Humphreys, the freshman from Australia. Eulis got bumped, no whistle, but he will finish. And Kentucky with another basket in transition. Boy, how about Tyler Eulis using his body to shield off the defender and finish that play? But Kentucky's big guys have done a pretty darn good job of protecting the lane. They just got to do a better job of rebounding. Jones pulls up to the long jumper. Loose ball, Allen got a piece of it, but it's out of bounds to Kentucky. Look like Humphreys pushed Grayson Allen. But look at this block. Goes straight up and gets it right out of the air. Body contact was after the block, so therefore ruled incidental. But a really nice job of shielding off Matt Jones with his body, Tyler Eulis. He hasn't played his best basketball the first couple games of the season. But he is capable of much, much better. Seven assists and six turnovers in the first two games, but showed enough last year that... Everybody knew he would become a force this year. No more platoons. That's all done with. Different style for Kentucky. Different personnel. And boy, would they love, would John Calipari love to see 
a healthy Alex Poitras. Just go out there, be an athlete, and make some plays. Yeah, and he's coming off that knee injury. It's easy to say be an athlete. But that's the way he's got to play. He's got to run the floor, rebound, finish plays. This is Luke Kennard, the, a terrific shooter, another one of the freshmen. He's from Franklin, Ohio, has not shown what he can do shooting the ball in the games, lights it up in practice, and the Duke staff feels that he's right on the cusp of letting loose in a game. Well, he averaged 38 points a game in high school in Ohio. He's the second all-time leading scorer in that state that John Diebler went to Ohio State. I'll tell you what, in this game, you have got to have all five guys go to the defensive glass. Right now, Kentucky's letting their big guys rebound. The guards have to rebound as well, because between Emil Jefferson and Marshall Plumley, those guys are outstanding offensive rebounders. You can't just rebound with them one on one. Ulysses creates a little space off to Humphreys, who missed the jumper well long. Loose ball, run down and saved by Plumley. We are better than six minutes into the game. Nobody for Duke has scored other than Plumley until now. Emil Jefferson with a chance for three. Duke is said to be a guard dominated team. But right now, their two front court players have dominated their scoring. Nice pass and a good little hesitation fake. And Jefferson goes up strong. He's averaging a double-double coming into this game. Senior from Philadelphia was a McDonald's All-American. I mean, he's a talented player, but has been a role player. Now, role player sometimes means, means limited to fans, but he's not limited. He's a good basketball player. Three-point deficit for Duke. Jefferson at the line. And the offensive rebound for Kennard. Jones will tie the game. And anytime there is an offensive rebound, that is the primary time you want to get a three because everybody's thinking about running the other way. You get a step in three. And John Calipari wanted to limit the catch-and-shoot opportunities of Duke. Foul there called on Derek Thornton trying to stay in front of Tyler Ulis. Kentucky has got to become a more physical basketball team. They are not blocking out, and there's no reason that you should give up second chances off of a missed free throw. You know, Kentucky needs to be more physical on screens, and they need to be more physical on blockouts, because right now they would be ahead were it not for the offensive glass. Derek Willis into the game for Kentucky. The junior off to a good start this year, playing a lot, scoring a lot in the first two games, and Willis and LeBissier are both up going for the rebound, and the ruling is, is that one of them was called for basket interference. John Calipari not sure he agrees with that call. Well, that's the kind of thing that a coach can live with when you got three guys attacking the offense with three blue shirts in the air wow. and four white shirts watching. Duke was fortunate there. Seven minutes in, tied at 14. Jones, left-handed layup, in and out, rebound to LeBissier. Well, Kentucky gets the ball out quickly. Murray the kick, Willis open for three. Murray with the offensive rebound, rolls off the rim. LeBissier has it swatted away. Transition defense is at a premium. When Kentucky gets conversion, they are gone the other way. You have got the sprint back. Murray for three, wide left. Taking a shot without a pass. That is a recipe for disaster. Thornton, end to end, and another rejection. LeBissier got a fingertip on it, and a foul call going against Duke. John Calipari is furious at Jamal Murray right now for taking that jump shot. He wants him to drive the ball to the basket, put it on the floor, and attack. Now, he can make that shot, but if you do it off of a drive... Drive the ball is what he's saying. Yep. You're a good lip reader. <laughs> I leave out the odd word here and there, although he didn't use any in that side. But you've seen a lot of, both of us have seen a lot of Murray. Do you consider him more of a scorer than a pure shooter? Yeah, I think that's right. And he's a big time scorer. He's got a little hook there. Maybe Sierra called for the foul. Using the left arm to try to get around the defender. That is the second on him. And we'll see if John Calipari is going to leave him in the game. Can't imagine he's going to leave him no. in for very long. He's got to get him out of there. He probably should have gotten him out before this play. And we'll see if Duke goes right at him. Because if you can get a third on him right now, that's a huge play. Bernard, the lefty drive, soft off the glass. Kept alive by Poitras. And another foul against Duke. This one is on Chase Jeter, another one of their freshmen. He hails from Las Vegas. Media timeout on the court. Kentucky and Duke all tied up.
Tonight's game is a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned of making tires for game-changing traction inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Welcome back to the United Center in Chicago, the first of two. Kentucky and Duke, and what a run it has been for John Calipari in Lexington. Since coming to Kentucky in 2009, 18 Kentucky players have been chosen in the first round of the draft, and even more remarkably, 15 of those 18 have been freshmen. 12 of them have been lottery picks, and three of them have been the top overall pick, Jay, including Carl Anthony Towns just this past summer. Just an amazing array of talent, and an array of talent that for the last three years, Duke has started to match. Mike Krzyzewski and John Calipari both have been dominant in recruiting the top-level talents. And you recruit top talents, they're going to have an opportunity to leave early. I'll tell you what, Dan, like right now, the game's tied 14-14. 12 of Duke's 14 points are off of offensive rebound. They got a three off of a, a missed free throw offensive rebound. And if you take away their second shots, they haven't had much offensively. Let's check in with Shannon Spade. Well, guys, John Calipari, you heard him say drive the ball. He just wants these guys to be a lot more aggressive. Something he's talked about this season so far. He said they're driving it, they're throwing it up in the air, knowing they're not going to make it, knowing we're not going to crack down. We guys, we've got to be tougher. Well, and you would think with the emphasis on freedom of movement, calling, hand checking, teams that like to drive, Jay, will probably drive even more than they have in the past. No question. And, you know, I don't think it's going to change all that that much I mean Kentucky is a team that last year the year before the year before that would have driven the ball they've got so many guys that are playmakers and I'll tell you Isaiah Briscoe just did an excellent job defensively making that catch by Luke Kennard difficult he forced that turnover Briscoe and a block is the call on Jeter Jeter second second. foul Jeter's a seven-footer. Not sure he should be trying to take charges because the play before, he did a great job of going straight up and challenging without picking up a foul. As Jay talked about, 12 of the 14 Duke points tonight have come on second possessions, on second chance opportunities. And both teams getting into the paint. Kentucky had three or four baskets in transition just flying down the court after Duke misses earlier in the game. Boy, it is tough to get the ball in bounds with Brandon Ingram guarding. He's got a 7-3 wingspan. And he is going to be at the point of a 1-3-1 at times, and he's going to be guarding the ball out of bounds. Kentucky got away with a walk there. Ingram guarding Murray right now. Lee with a drive over Plumlino, and down with a rebound, Jefferson. Big guys on both teams are making opponents shoot over the top without fouling. And so far, they've been missing those opportunities. They're trying to take advantage of Euless down to the post. 5-9 guarding the 6-5 Matt Jones. And we have a held ball. The arrow will keep it with Duke. As Marshall Plumley was putting the ball on the floor from the three-point line and driving. Well, that, that's what Kentucky wants in that situation. You had Tyler Euless who was basically fronting Matt Jones. And sitting on his legs and then you tried to pressure so you take away vision they can't throw over the top and if Marshall Plumley, who's had a great game like John Calipari wants him driving it from the top of the key that's not that's not his game now Ingram to inbound it Isaac Humphries has checked back in and he's on Plumley right now keep an eye on the matchup now it's Euless on Grayson Allen Allen has been quiet in the early going here. And Marshall Plumley is a graduate student he's got to be 23 years old and Humphreys is 17. Shot clock violation. Well, they grow big in Australia. Seven foot 270 at the age of 17. Now look at what's coming up on the second game tonight. Journey to the tourney presented by Sonic. It's the second game of the State Farm Champions Classic. Number four, Kansas, and number 13, Michigan State. Going at it in the nightcap here tonight in Chicago. This will be Kentucky ball. Kentucky's done a nice job of creating some movement and then with that dribble drive motion of getting the ball into the lane. But I think they've got to be a little bit smarter and a little bit tougher when they're putting those shots up. Runner, floater. I think they're pulling the trigger on these and kind of pulling the string too much. Last basket for Kentucky was better than five minutes ago. Nice dish. Humphreys from Lee. How about that pass? A little dish off from Murray to Lee, and that was a great pass from the baseline to Humphreys. Marcus Lee, another guy who's going to have a larger role than he did last year, you would imagine. Ingram, nice look. 
And Jefferson slams it home to tie the game. Well, I'll tell you, Matt Jones did a very nice job against Tyler Ulysses' pressure. And he kind of backed him down, got the ball to a cutting Ingram, and a terrific pass to Jefferson. And now here's 6-9 Ingram on 5-9 Ulysses. Briscoe, tough one, off balance, and it goes. And he can make tough shots. And Seth Greenberg has called him a ball guard, and he's a big-time guard. And now Jamal Murray called for the block. So Brandon Ingram is basically a 6'9 guard. Coming off that little curl when Marcus Lee steps up. Anytime you help up, you're vulnerable to a drop-off. And that was a really nice pass by Brandon Ingram. I'm not sure there's another player in college basketball that's quite like Ingram. He's built like Kevin Durant. He doesn't shoot it like Durant, but he's built like Durant. And he, he's not a forward. He's a guard. Let's go to Shannon. Yeah, guys, and we talk about how much a player changes from when they start college to when they go on to the NBA. Take a look at Brandon Ingram since he got to Duke. When he first got here on the left, he's gained 30 pounds on the right. They have him listed at 190, but uh, still, you obviously can see he has a lot more weight to gain. So he was down around 160 pounds as a 6'9". Well, if he gained 30 pounds, I don't know where he's put because <laughs> he still looks like he weighs 160 pounds, but he's a, he's a big-time talent. Foul on Ingram, his second, and that'll put Kentucky into the bonus. Kennard is going to check in for Ingram. Big numbers in the first two games for Ingram, although he shot the ball much better in the second game, a win over Bryant than he did in the first game, a win over Siena. When was the last time you weighed 160? I was eight. <laughs> a long, long time ago. I'm glad they're not showing before and after pictures of us <laughs> in our suits over the last 15 years or so. That's not doing anybody any good. The pace has slowed down a bit here in the last few minutes. It's tied at 18 in Chicago. Allen rises up for the jumper off the back of the iron. Jefferson with a rebound and a putback. Boy, Duke is dominating Kentucky on the glass. I mean, just dominating Kentucky on the glass. First lead now for Duke, and a foul before the shot is called on Allen. Yeah, that's the one thing in watching tape of Kentucky. I, I did not think that the Wildcats have been very physical on screens. They're not hitting bodies on screens. And I can tell you for an absolute fact, they're not hitting bodies. Scalabissier hasn't been in the game since the 12-minute mark with two fouls. But they have not laid a body on anybody on the glass. Not anybody. Lee goes out. And Poitras comes back in, maybe to lend an added element of muscle on the defensive glass. Tyler Eulis at the free throw line for Kentucky. You know, on first shot attempts on possessions, Duke can't be shooting more than 20%. But with those second shots, and that's what's keeping them, keep them in the game. Pressure from Kentucky. And again, no prototypical, no true point guard. Although Mike Krzyzewski does not define the positions that way, but no true point guard in the starting five for Duke. Allen, what a block. Humphreys with his second of the night. Boy, with the left hand, that was big time. And Kentucky flying down the court again. Murray can't finish. But getting after it is Poitras. And it all started with a great block shot from the youngest player on the court, Isaac Humphreys. Here's the finish of all that. Murray missing it. Nobody boxing out. An outstanding offensive rebounder and Alex Poitras. And you talk about playing like an elite athlete, and that's exactly what Poitras did there. And one. But what a block by Humphreys. Humphreys has really made his presence felt at the defensive end of the floor. Now he runs down the rebound and then turns it over. Put it on the deck. And then gets it back for a moment. <laughs> That's the difference between a senior and a freshman. The freshman bent over at the waist, the senior dove for it. And now Humphreys called for the foul. Not popular with Kentucky fans here in this building. Well, that was a good call. 7.55 to go. Kentucky and Duke going at it here at the United Center. Ramil Jefferson slamming one home for the Blue Devils. Poitras with the answer for the Cats. It's been a long time running just to get here from where I'm from. State Farm Champions Classic Game 1. Kentucky and Duke. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Shannon Spake. Glad you're with us, Kentucky. 
leading by two. Jamie had a great point before the last time out about a difference between a freshman and a senior. Show it to us again. Well, Isaac Humphreys has played great in this game. Loose ball. Humphreys is bending over for it. Marshall Plumley dives on the floor, gets possession of it, starts a break in an advantage situation for Duke. And look, this happens to a lot of young players. Humphreys is 17 years old. He's got a great future ahead of him. His present is pretty darn good. But everybody kind of learns that the hard way. You bend over for the ball, another guy dives on it. It's kind of a who wants it more type scenario. But I think Isaac Humphreys just learned a really valuable lesson. And my guess is he won't let that happen again. The 50 year senior Marshall Plumley had the four minutes of his life at the beginning of the game. He scored the first nine points tonight for Duke. If you weren't with us early, the leading scorer for Kentucky's Isaiah Briscoe with six. Kansas and Michigan State still to come in the second game tonight from the United Center. We may leave Chicago and talk about Kansas as perhaps being the best team here. It's very possible. Like the Jayhawks, they do not have the same kind of lottery talent with an Andrew Wiggins or Joel Embiid as they've had. But boy, can they play. Bernard misses the corner three. And down with a rebound is Briscoe, who had 12 rebounds in Kentucky's last game against the New Jersey Institute of Technology. 11 of them at the defensive end. A little 2-3 zone right now for Duke. They've been playing more zone. 2-3, 3-2, little 1-3-1. One, one. Given a different look to Kentucky, trying to protect the paint. But you still have to drive the zone. Lewis will try to drive. Sneaks inside. Tries to find Humphreys. Rolls off the rim of the rebound down to Plumlee. And that's a play that Humphreys tried to finish with the left hand. He's got to finish that. Allen. Weak side rebound. Jefferson, he'll kick it out. Going for block shots. Poitras went for that block shot. That is a third foul on uh, Humphreys, isn't it? And a chance for three for Jefferson. Or did they call the foul before the shot? I think it was before. But when Poitras went for that block shot, that opens up the offensive glass. And that has been such a huge part of Duke's offense. And it is the third on Humphreys. He'll sit down. At the line for Duke, Emil Jefferson, one of the many who has worn the number 21 with honor down in Boone. First immortalized by my partner, Jay Boone. Not first immortalized. One of the guys who immortalized it back in the 80s. More like disgraced. <laughs> who are some of the other 21s? Oh, Robert Bricky. Yeah. Trajan Langdon is pretty good. I, yep. I, I've not done the math on this, but I think, I think that 21 might be the most productive number in Duke history. Because everybody's been good, but not good enough to get it retired. <laughs> Ulyss with a baseline jumper. Uh, Kentucky's patient and drives the gaps of this zone. You know, Duke has been playing zone, but not necessarily a zone team. And they can still get good opportunities. Here's Jones. Floater. Yes. Duke back within two. Oh, Matt Jones is a good player. Not a great player, but he is just solid in every respect. And... I think the best defender on this good team. And they're looking at him really to fill a big leadership role with the departure of Quinn Cook. And Mike Krzyzewski thinks he's doing that uh, tremendously well so far this year. Poitras couldn't finish at the rim. Looks like Plumley got a hand on that from behind and blocked it. Just knocked it out of Poitras' hands. But Kentucky did a good job driving the gap to get that. Plumley driving and draws the foul. What a game Marshall Plumley's had. NBA Wednesday presented by State Farm. You see a couple of Wildcats, Anthony Davis. The Pelicans take it on OKC, and then it'll be the Chicago Bulls. So Derek Rose had done the practice earlier today. Rolled his ankle last night. It'll be Chicago taking on Eric Bledsoe and the Phoenix Suns. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7.30 with Tracy McGrady joining the crew. Thornton back into the game and now for Duke and as Kennard will sit down really important six minutes before halftime Pascal Lapissiere still out of the game and will likely be out the remainder of the first half with those two fouls Isaac Humphreys with three so it's Poitras and Lee the big guys in there right now for the Wildcats and Duke back to man-to-man Ulyss Finds a wide open Poitras, misses the three. Rebound down to Lee. Rejected by Plumley, got it back. 
Now it's Poitras blocked by Plumley. Duke Ball. Boy, what a stand. I'll tell you, Duke is nowhere close in this game right now without Marshall Plumley. Yeah, he went straight up and just forced him to shoot over, and Kentucky's not finishing plays close to the basket. Nice job by Briscoe to stay in front. Off the leg of Thornton. Shot clock down inside five. Jones. And here come the Cats. And Kentucky's got an opportunity to be a special team defensively. If they get after it, they've got a rebound. That's the one thing that they have not done in this game. They've got to get all five guys rebounding. But if they decide they're going to move their feet and get out in pressure, they've got a chance to be very good defensively, just different from last year's team. Here's Murray. Got the switch. Has Plumley on it now. Kicks it to Eulis. Plenty of time. Briscoe checks the clock. He'll put it up and bank it home. Well, that mouth guard has been everywhere but in his <laughs> mouth all game long. Yep. It's amazing yep. how he can play like that. <laughs> it's remarkable. Four-point lead, Kentucky. Thornton around the Plumlee screen. Pick and roll. Plumlee hit hard at the rim. I think it's going to go on Poitras. No, it'll be Lee. Marcus Lee called for the foul, his second. Boy, what a strong move. Side pick and roll in the slot. Open side. And a nice little pocket pass. And you can see Briscoe here just pulling up and knocking it off the glass. I'm sure he didn't call that, but never seen a guy play no. a full game. That's never been in his mouth. It's amazing. <laughs> I think it's proven to be more effective when it actually is in there. But you're right. It's been like that from the national anthem onward tonight. Perry's been stalking that sideline most of the night. Mike Krzyzewski's been a lot quieter over on the Duke side. Well, he's been sitting down. He hasn't been quieter. <laughs> <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> Spoken like a guy who played for him. <laughs> Three-point lead, Kentucky inside four minutes to go in the first half. Boythrus. And Jefferson, another rebound for Duke. But Plumlee has done a nice job protecting the basket. Has not blocked a ton of shots, but he's changed some shots. Jefferson wanted the ball inside. He had Eulis on him, but Jones took the three and missed it badly. And at the other end, Lee with a slam. Boy, when Kentucky gets a rebound, they are gone. They just haven't gotten many of them. Well, as you've said so many times, the first shot's like the first pass in your opponent's fast break, and that was the case right there. 8 nothing. they lead in the fast break department. Allen, too much size, bothered by Lee. It looked like he got fouled there because Lee brought his arms down. Nice move. Euless coast to coast, biggest lead of the night for Kentucky. Big Blue Nation is in the house here in Chicago. And the Wildcats have upped the lead to seven over Duke. 2.57 to go in the first half. When we come back, Shannon Spake, Kirk Herbstreit, talking the college football rankings. The college football playoff top 25 ranking show presented by Goodyear comes your way tonight, right here from the United Center between game one and game two it's your chance to see the top four and the rest of the rankings revealed live join reese and the guys between games right now for a preview shannon spake is with kirk Herbstreit. that's right dan all of our friends are hanging out here tonight enjoying the game we're watching some of the the top four really uh basketball t uh, play teams in the nation but let's talk about football right now top four football teams college football teams kirk i know you made your picks last night what do you think? Who, who, who are your picks for the top four? Well, I mean, you have Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State. I think everybody agrees they're, at the, for now, at the top three. And then it's a big debate. I mean, you've got Notre Dame out there. You have Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma, 
after what they did last week against Baylor. Iowa is still out there. So what's going to be interesting tonight is four, five, six, and seven. And here we go. You know, we got three more weeks, but we'll see where the, the, where they stack up tonight. You picked Oklahoma State in that top four, right? I did. I put them up there last week. I kept them there. Oklahoma, for me, after watching what they did in Waco, moved significantly up the last uh, this past week. And now they get another opportunity against TCU. Oklahoma is that stock you want to buy because, to me, the Sooners, if they play the way they did last week, they're a hot team. All right. We'll see you between games. Enjoy some hoops. You guys having fun up here? Absolutely. I'm learning a lot. It's a good time. All right. Back to you, Dan. All right, guys. Thank you. Good one here. Kentucky. Uh, on a bit of a run right now, leading Duke 31 to 24 in the last three minutes of the first half. Here with the State Farm Champions Classic, Michigan State and Kansas, game number two tonight. Duke's got to get Grayson Allen going. He's 0 for 8, has not scored. He's averaging 27. He just picked up an assist on the three by Derek Thornton, the freshman's first points of the night. Allen set a back screen, got the ball, and then attacked. And oftentimes when a player sets a screen, you're going to be open. It's not necessarily the cutter that's going to be open. It's the screener. Duke back in a man-to-man -man defense. And Briscoe and Eulis have been very good. Combined, they're 7 of 8. Eulis cut off. Cross-court Murray. Gets inside. Floater a little bit short. Lee down with an offensive rebound. That is his specialty in the first two games for Kentucky this year. He ripped down 12 offensive rebounds. Well, and that's been his specialty his entire career. He gets offensive rebounds and punches. But you like the way Jamal Murray, instead of taking that jump shot on the reversal, put the ball on the floor. John Calipari wants his team to drive it. Thornton, step back jumper, back to back field goals for the freshman. Uh, Thornton got off to a slow start his first couple games, still feeling his way around. It's too easy. Eulis over the top to Lee. That is way too easy. Great play and great vision by Tyler Eulis. Kentucky by six. Allen still scoreless in the game, and as Jay mentioned, averaging 27 in Duke's first two games this year against Sienna and Bryant. Kentucky's downing ball screens. They're keeping it to the same side. you got to throw back and reverse it. Matt Jones with a long two. Three guards, Briscoe, Murray, Eulis getting comfortable playing together as a unit. Briscoe the kick, and he threw it in between his two teammates. Turns it over. Well, Duke returning the favor. They're icing that ball screen, keeping it to the same side, and a great job running the floor by Marcus Lee. Got behind the defense. No pressure at all on Eulis, so he's able to casually just throw that ball up. Never took his eyes off the floor. Final minute of the first half. Allen turns the corner again. He's tried this shot a number of times, but just too much length for Kentucky. And they've made it really hard on Grayson Allen tonight. Eulis open. Look at Lee soaring in, but stepped out of bounds. Yeah. But so what? What a great, <laughs> what a great play and great hustle by Marcus Lee. The Jeep halftime report is moments away and live right here from the United Center. Look at these three guys, Reese Davis, Jay Williams, and Seth Greenberg with analysis of the first half. What do you, what's the problem, Jay? Well, what do you got? There are a lot of vests and waistcoats up there. <laughs> Can I get a drink, waiter? <laughs> Welcome back to the great city of Chicago, the State Farm Champions Classic, Kentucky and Duke in the first game tonight. And Kentucky with the lead, and they would have a much bigger lead, Jay, were it not for a great performance tonight from Marshall Plumlee. Now, who among these great analysts we've got here <laughs> predicted that we would be doing a Marshall Plumley package <laughs> of highlights in this Duke-Kentucky game, but he's been outstanding. He has played incredibly hard. He has protected the rim. His offensive rebounding has been magnificent. This is the best game that Marshall Plumlee's ever played at any level. He's been outstanding. 11 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 blocks in the first half. And a 4 or 5 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock as Duke tries to narrow the deficit here at the end of the half. And Jamal Murray has done a nice job not only driving the ball, but defensively he's done a nice job as well. And great job by Marcus Lee to stay in front. It's still loose. It still belongs to Duke, but not for long. Briscoe. Oh! Yes. What a beautiful play by Isaiah Briscoe. 
And what a finish to the first half for Kentucky. Marcus Lee moving his feet as a big guy and staying in front made that play. Terrific little pass ahead by Jamal Murray. And you can't teach this kind of play. Thornton falls down, opens it up. I mean, who teaches this? That's magnificent. Shannon Spake is with John Calipari. Coach, you guys are playing with a lot of energy, but how important is it to increase that energy on the glass? Are you watching this game? I am watching this game. We can't rebound. They're throwing us out of the way. Marcus Lee finally started to fight back. Alex needs to be the elite athlete he is. Scow wouldn't fight. We couldn't get balls. Plumlee had the first nine points of the game. It was 9-9. He's not their score. So we'll rebound in the second half or we'll lose. All the other stuff we're doing is fine. Spreading the court. We're beating them on the bounce. We're figuring it out. But you got to rebound. That's his whole game. If you defend and then they throw it because what they're doing is they're just trying to get it over our center's head, knowing we're not cracking down on the weak side, which they're right. We're not. Thank you, Coach. See you. <laughs> John Calipari always entertaining in the interview coming off the court. Kentucky entertaining tonight, leading Duke 37 to 31 at the half here in Chicago. After the break, it is the Chief Halftime Report. Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams. Don't miss it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Arby's. Arby's, we have the meats. And Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. State Farm Champions Classic, our first game tonight here in Chicago, Kentucky and Duke. Tonight's game is a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament, and this one most definitely will. Welcome back inside the United Center, everybody. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis, good first half. Up and down they went. Kentucky and Duke, and it was Kentucky really thriving in transition. Yeah, both teams had had huge pluses in the first half and huge minuses, and Duke was not as tough as Kentucky in transition. When there was conversion, it was Kentucky racing out and getting advantage situations and getting easy baskets in the open floor. The catch, you've got three point guards on the floor basically at all times, and at times they made it look easy. Nobody picking up the ball, and all the way to the basket for Tyler Eulis. He had an excellent first half, controlled the game for Kentucky, and Duke stayed in it on the offensive glass, thanks in large part to Marshall Plumlee and Emile Jefferson. And for Duke, the leading scorer, 27 points a game on this young season, Grayson Allen, the sophomore, zero points, 0 of 9. Brandon Ingram and Allen have combined for a goose egg, zero points, 0 of 11 from the field. And Duke is going to have to get much tougher in the second half. And they're going to have to face Scalabissier in the second half. And also Isaac Humphreys, who sat out a good portion of the first half in foul trouble. Let's bring back in Shannon Spade. Shannon. Well, guys, that big goose egg was certainly mentioned in the halftime locker room for Duke, specifically with Grayson Allen. The team told me he's taken shots against this Kentucky team, the same shots he took the first two games. This defense is a lot different. He's going to have to adjust. They also mentioned the perimeter. They said we're just absolutely getting bullied there and in transition. Well, Allen, a lot of the misses were on drives as he went to his right and tried to loft them up and over Kentucky defenders, but just so much length for this Kentucky defense as Jamal Murray drives, and he is fouled by Marshall Plumley. That'll be the second for the big man for Duke. Well, Murray just sought out the body of Marshall Plumley. He is a much better athlete, Murray is, than he gets credit for. He had 30 points and was the MVP of that Nike event in Portland. Tell you, he is a big time player. Also had a chance to play internationally in the summer, played in the Pan Am games, and spearheaded a win for Canada over the United States in the semifinal. He had no points, Jay, at the end of three quarters. And at the end of overtime, he had 22 points. Scored 22 in the fourth and in overtime as he misses both free throws. Unusual. He's an outstanding shooter. 
Six point lead for Kentucky. We're just underway here in the second half. And don't go anywhere after this one. We've got the college football top 25 ranking show between games and then Kansas and Michigan State coming in the second game tonight as Ingram is called for the foul. That will be the third on the freshman. And we'll see if Mike Shevsky's going to leave him in. So far, it looks like he will. Well, Kentucky is icing or downing the ball screen. So when there's a side ball screen, they're keeping it to that side. That's the first time Duke threw out of it to reverse the ball. And Brandon Ingram tried to take Tyler Eulis down into the post or tried to bully him, and the referees called an offensive foul. Eulis guarded by Allen. Three-guard look for most of the night for Kentucky. Eulis has had a very strong night. Pass deflected by the length of Ingram. Kentucky retains possession. Risco had a terrific first half. Misses the reverse. Rebound Jefferson. A smart play by Jefferson. He was going to outlet it to Jones, and Murray was laying in wait to steal that, and Jefferson spotted it. Ingram spinning, adjusting, and finishing. And there you can see the talent of Brandon Ingram. He's got the opportunity to be a big-time player. There is no one else in college basketball quite like him. He did not play well in the first half, but he's got much better in him. Murray can't get by Plumley. Nice look inside. Marcus Lee with a finish. A nice pass and a great catch by Marcus Lee. Jefferson just a little bit late getting there from the weak side. Allen lost it. Murray's got it. And it's out of bounds after a foul committed by Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen is totally out of sorts. He did not play well in the first half. And coming into the second half, he did not start out well. Turning the ball over, trying to bring it up against the pressure of Isaiah Briscoe. Just mishandled it and doesn't really get after the ball and compounds the error by fouling. And Allen will sit and Thornton back in now at the point for Duke. Briscoe. Briscoe with a crossover driving on Ingram and rejected. Either Ingram or Plumley got that block. Before Kentucky drives, they've got a little get a little bit more movement. But they're driving against the set defense, and they're more than good enough. These guys are more than good enough to get the ball on an initial drive, but they're not getting it past the help. Wide open, Ulis. Missed it badly, and the rebound down to Duke. Pascal Lebessier about to come back into the game. Didn't start the second half. Didn't want to pick up that third foul quickly. Jones with a shot fade and a three. Matt Jones really shooting the ball well in the early going this season. Anytime you can get Matt Jones to put the ball on the floor, you have a better opportunity. You don't want him to catch and shoot situations, but he really took that shot with a lot of confidence. He has made eight of 14 threes so far in the young season. And Duke back with in three. Long stretch without a whistle here to the outset of the second half. Oh, Murray with a reverse. Are you kidding me? What a play. Goes right past the outstretched arms of Marshall Plumley, the other side of the basket, majoring in English. <laughs> Five-point lead, Kentucky. Seven now for Murray. Ingram, he can get his shot about any time he wants because of his length. Can't finish it. But Jefferson has been all over the glass at both ends tonight. Threw it away. Eulis ahead to Murray for the easy two. Well, you make a mistake, and Kentucky's laying it in on the other end. This can be an, an outstanding transition team, and has proven it throughout this ballgame. And the lead back to seven for Kentucky. Duke has led for five seconds in this game. There's a block by Lee. Loose ball to Eulis. Foul by Jefferson. Well, you bring that ball down, and Tyler Eulis, Eulis was just waiting there. Kind of like years ago, Muggsy Bogues used to do. <laughs> bring the ball down. You're a beast, and you bring it down below your weight, waist, and he takes it away from you. Well, this is a big-time move by Jamal Murray. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. What a great play. And then here's the Eulis feed on the turnover. Just throws it out ahead of Murray, and... You make a mistake and convert. It's going the other way on conversion. Fast break points, Jay. 14-0 Kentucky. 
You know, it's funny, they calculate fast break points a little bit different from what I would call transition. I think in transition, Kentucky's actually scored more points. Floater by Murray, not there. Le Bissier with a follow. Well, he sat out a long time, but made his impact known as soon as he came in. Nobody lays a body on Scal Le Bissier and lays it right in. And the freshman ups the lead to nine, the largest of the night for the Wildcats. Off the fingertips of Plumlee. Numbers for Kentucky. Murray, no, and Lee with the follow. That was actually a five on one. Just been a transition clinic by Kentucky. Poor pass by Thornton, and they turn it into a bucket. Double digit lead, Kentucky. Duke desperately needs a basket. Ingram will draw the foul and shoot a couple of free throws when we come back. Great start here with the second half for Kentucky. And still to come, game number two tonight. KU is in the house. The Kansas Jayhawks and the Michigan State Spartans in the second game of the State Farm Champions Classic. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lincoln Financial. Take charge of your today and tomorrow. Bobby Hurley up the floor with Leitner. They throw it to left to the floor. Leitner catches, comes down, dribbles, shoots, scores! Christian Leitner has hit the bucket at the buzzer! The Blue Devils win it! 104 to 103! A look at the assist of the night brought to you by State Farm. And yes, if you're a Duke fan, you still love Christian Lake. Jay Billis was a grad assistant. Well, some people don't like Christian Lake. If you're a Kentucky fan, you still hate Christian Lake. Sounds like they could make maybe a 30 for 30 on something like that. You were a grad assistant on that team. What do you remember about that moment? I remember I wasn't too confident when Sean Woods hit that shot and there was a timeout. But what an amazing game. And Kentucky played great. Duke played great. One of the, the truly iconic games in the history of basketball, not yep. just college basketball, but basketball. Ingram at the line to make some both to get the deficit down to nine. What has Kentucky done well in the first five minutes of this half? Well, they've done a really good job defensively. They've turned Duke over and they've scored on the other end of it. And I think they continue, they need to continue to drive the ball. It's a, it's a little bit of a bigger lineup right now for Kentucky. Derek Willis into the ball game. He's more a shooter than a driver. Look at the size difference between Eulis and Brandon Ingram. Eulis <laughs> baseline. Threads the needle inside to Le Bissier. But Kentucky is just driving past Duke. They cannot stay in front. That's putting them into rotation. Kentucky taking advantage of it. What's the ceiling this year as, as a collegiate for Tyler Eulis? How good can he be this year? Well, I mean, he's right up there with the best point guards in the country. A, a number of people, a number of our guys, you know, Sean Farnham, others happen to think that Tyler Eulis is the best point guard in the country. And reasonable minds can differ. I happen to think it's Chris Dunn of, of Providence, but it's a close call. Bissier the miss, and Plumley down with a rebound, Lee with a reach-in foul. It's just such a different situation for Eulis because of the platoon system last year. He was kind of an 18 to 20 minute guy. You would come in for four, you would come out for four. I mean, more often than not, even with Murray out there, the ball is in the hands of Eulis. Right? And it should be. I mean, these other guys, Isaiah Briscoe and Jamal Murray, th those guys are point guards. But he's a floor leader, a floor general. And the ball should be in his hands because he'll find the right spot for it. He's an excellent defender. Puts great pressure on the ball, forces you to start a little bit further out, forces you to turn your back. And look where Duke's having to catch the ball to initiate their offense. Kennard with a crossover on Willis and will draw the foul. Good drive went right into the body of Derek Willis to draw that foul. And a couple of free throws coming for Luke Kennard, freshman from Franklin, Ohio. McDonald's All-American in the 2015 Parade National Player of the Year. Ten points per game in the first two games of the season for the Blue Devils. Since early on in the game, Dan, Kentucky's done a, a much better job of rebounding. You know, they haven't done a great job, but much better. And Duke has had a hard time finding scores off their initial offense. They haven't gotten much in transition, and they haven't gotten much in their half-court offense. You, know, you take away their second shots and this is a totally different ball game for Kentucky 
Duke has a down to nine. You saw Grayson Allen, who remains on the bench. He is scoreless in this game. And after he picked up a foul early this second half, just a second foul, but Mike Krzyzewski took him out and has had him out for about the last four minutes. Duke fans trying to make some noise. They play. Euless baseline puts the brakes on, can finish, and Poitras is there to help him out. Boy, that was a great read by Tyler Euless. First to get open, read the defense, faded back, caught it, then drove the ball. Now he missed that shot. Brandon Ingram, a big reason why with those long arms, but that opened up the offensive glass. Kennard in and out on the three. That rebound for Poitras moments ago was the 15th offensive rebound for Kentucky in this game. Now they have been all over the glass. They haven't finished the same way Duke was finishing early. But that's going to have a cumulative effect. Hurry back to Ulis. Ten on the shot clock. Now they're running Ulis around like a two guard. He's going to have to make something happen here. The three to shoot. Forces up the three. And Plumley is fouled by Lebissier. That will be the third on Scal Lebissier. It's not a smart play by Lebissier because Plumley had him blocked out. You, know, you give a lot of credit for the effort, but it wasn't the most intelligent effort because there was a very low likelihood he was going to be able to get the ball and wound up picking up his third foul. Grayson Allen has returned now for Duke. Checking back into the game, played sparingly in the first half for Kentucky is Charles Matthews, a 6'6 freshman from Chicago. Duke and Kentucky with the top two ranked recruiting classes coming into this season. And Jay, they're one and two for next year's class as well right now. Uh, Duke with the number one ranked and number two ranked players in the country. That's never happened before in a recruiting class with Jason Tatum and Harry Giles. Derek Thornton with the floater, and Kentucky just getting a commitment today from Bam Adebayo. And Bam Adebayo, Paul Biancardi, who along with Reggie Rankin do a terrific job with ESPN recruiting and recruiting nation. He likens him to a, an Antonio McDice player. Poitras fouled from behind by Thornton. Now, there is a lot of time left in this game. It's a nine-point game with a couple of free throws coming up. But there is plenty of time left in this one. Duke and Kentucky, one and two every year of late. And John Calipari's never had a recruiting class since he got there in 2010. Never had a recruiting class ranked lower than number two. And Tom Izzo, you saw that Michigan State ranked third on the ESPN 100 for next season. Tom Izzo says that that's the best class that he's ever had coming in. Well, he's done a great job recruiting, too. Yeah. You see how Matt Cunningham went for the clear shot over the bald and nearly bald heads? Yeah, was that necessary? Just, yeah. <laughs> bald is endlessly funny. But bald never gets unfunny to Doug Holmes in the game. It's it's bald is beautiful. It is. They just wish they could do it. Who loves you, baby? <laughs> Here comes Isaac Humphreys back into the game now for Lebissier. With Lebissier picking up his third foul. Boy, what a nice rotation that Kentucky's going to have with Humphreys and Lebissier. Both of them very skilled. And both of them can knock down a perimeter jumper, so you can play pick and pop with them. And if you decide you're going to down a ball screen, you can throw back, reverse it, and they can set a little pin down for you. It, they have a chance to be very, very good together. You wouldn't guess it by looking at Humphreys, this you know, big bruising seven-footer, 270 pounds. He went to a performing arts high school in Australia as Allen finally gets on the board. Humphreys is a singer and a piano player. But right now on the court, he's uh, giving John Calipari some good minutes in the front court. Well, that's one thing that John Calipari did not want to happen. That was a catch-and-shoot opportunity. Murray leaves it short. Poitras doing the kind of things that John Calipari wants him to do. Just going and being an athlete. And he earns a tie-up. The arrow will give it to Duke, but a great effort there by Poitras. Timeout on the floor. 53-45, Kentucky leading Duke. provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires for game-changing traction inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. 
back at the United Center in Chicago with Jay Billis and Shannon Spink. I'm Dan Schulman. Game one of the State Farm Champions Classic. Kentucky leading Duke 53 to 45. We've still got Kansas and Michigan State to come in this great event, fifth year of this event. Next year, it'll be in New York City. It was in Indianapolis last year, full house no matter where they play this event. And you can understand why with these four great programs. Transition points, a huge, huge story in this game. Yeah, Kentucky has been dominant in transition. But Duke's starting to play with a little more vigor. Thornton missed a good look from beyond the arc and down with a two-handed rebound, Jamal Murray. And not been much on the offensive glass after that initial flurry by Duke. It's been Kentucky that's been all over the, the glass for second shots on their offensive end. And Briscoe's still wearing out one corner of that mouth guard. It, it still has not been in his mouth. It's amazing. It yeah. <laughs> Murray gets the switch, runs into the midsection of Plumley, keeps the dribble alive, finds Euless in the corner. Poitras had it knocked away, but Murray is there to clean it up. Well, Murray picks it up and got it off the glass so quickly. And John Calipari's talked about Alex Poitras playing like an elite athlete, and he has done that on the glass. Thornton bothered by Briscoe, and another run out for Kentucky. Murray behind the back, and boy, is John Calipari unhappy with that. Well, he should be. Not a, not a smart play, and he had an opportunity to get another transition bucket, maybe a foul, a bucket, or both. And he was looking to the bench as if he were going to take Murray out, but has not sent anybody to the scorer's table yet. Allen had to adjust in midair. And a foul on Briscoe. And Murray is such a good player. And he has a, a, a great ability to seek out contact and finish through contact. And on that last play, he just took the easy way out of throwing it behind his back instead of seeking out that contact and getting fouled. Briscoe limping ever so slightly as he heads to the bench. He did not play in the opener of the season for Kentucky because of a bruised knee. And there's Allen called for the foul. Great defense by Tyler Eulis. Eulis stayed right with him, maintained that guarding position. And that left arm for Grayson Allen came out just a bit and knocked him off balance. It was a, an offensive foul call and a good one. But give, a, give credit to Tyler Eulis. That, that was outstanding individual defense on the ball. And you can see Briscoe getting some work done right there lying in front of the pinch for Kentucky right now. Murray. Rebound Allen. Forced him to take a really tough shot. Now he can make that. But the percentages are lower. Kennard. And a foul underneath, away from the ball. Going on Kentucky. So this doesn't, hard to speculate. It looked like you at shoot around today getting your <laughs> daily massage. Yeah, well, you don't just roll out of bed and do this job, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> an elite athlete. Yeah. Yeah. We want you to broadcast like an elite athlete, Dan. <laughs> 10-point lead for Kentucky, and Briscoe looks to be okay, maybe just a cramp. Ingram trying to inbound it for Duke, and Murray steals it. Just throwing it up for grabs. And numbers again for Kentucky. Murray, yes! Now that's why Jamal Murray should not throw the ball behind his back, because he can do that. He's got 13 now to lead Kentucky. And that was all set up by Ingram's pass, who just threw it up for grabs. Couldn't get it in there. After the initial action on the out-of-bounds play, there wasn't a sense of urgency to get the ball in. He just threw it up for grabs. Jones cradles it high off the glass, and it will shoot a couple. You don't often see Duke sloppy on their out-of-bounds plays, and you know, you'd rather get a five-second call because at least then you can set your defense and play five on five. You throw that thing up for grabs against a team that has dominated in transition, and you're giving up a layup on the other end. And if he missed that, that was going to be a tip-in by Alex Poitras. Duke's turned it over 11 times. Kentucky's turned those turnovers into 13 points. Fourth foul on Scalabissier, who has played well in spurts tonight, but has been limited because of the foul trouble, and he's going to head back to the bench again. Well, Labissiere can be a little bit more physical. That's the next step for him, is getting a little bit stronger because he is very, very skilled and very athletic. I think he's just need, he needs to have a hit-first mentality. He'll sit Lee back into the game. 
Marcus Lee's been the difference maker in this one. He's got a double-double. He's been all over the place. I mean, they don't lose anything in terms of length or athleticism when a guy like Lee comes in for the BC Air. And they've got a nice rotation of big guys. You know, having Alex Poitras back is, is really big for Kentucky to have his experience. And away from the ball, a call going against Duke. But Derek Thornton grabbed Tyler Eulis coming off that screen. Tonight, after the Champions Classic, stick around for Sports Center at night, if for no other reason than to see John Butchergross make that smile, give you that face during Sports Center tonight. And then they'll be followed by Neil and Nicole on the West Coast. Sports Center at night tonight on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN. That is a fun show with John and John. You know, little known fact, John Butchergross is my roommate on a golf trip. And uh, he irons his golf clothes. <laughs> You know what? That is a little known for. <laughs> Not anymore. <Yeah. laughs> Can he play? He's a really good yeah. golfer. The lead continues to grow for Kentucky. You listen to double figures now. And in addition to the 10 points, Jay, how about six assists and no turnovers and some really good defense? Tyler Ulis has been great. Now, he didn't play particularly well the first two games for Kentucky. Hasn't shot the ball well. You know, in Kentucky's first two, they turned the ball over weren't in as good a sink, but they have not turned it over in this one. And they have played incredibly hard. Just six turnovers in 31 minutes. Some a little pressure on Marcus Lee at the point of that pressure with that length and his ability to move, move his feet. Thornton off to Jones. He'll launch a three and hit it. His third of the night. Well, Charles Matthews thought he was there. Now in high school, that would have been good enough. But guy like Matt Jones, you've got to make him put the ball on the floor because if you let him get into a, a catch-and-shoot motion, he's going to make that. He is a good catch-and-shoot jump shooter. He's got 16 tonight. He scored 29 in the first two games of the season for Duke, and he's another guy stepping into a larger role than he had last year. Yeah, he has showed tremendous fight in this game. The freshmen have had difficulty showing that fight, but not Matt Jones. Allen gets clobbered. All three officials blowing the whistle at once. Marcus Lee is fourth. Well, Kentucky has been outstanding in this game. And it's a 10-point game. But Duke is just a, a couple of threes away from putting some real game pressure on Kentucky. Grayson Allen going after that with both hands. Gets knocked to the floor by Marcus Lee. You know, Duke knocks down a couple free throws. Gets a stop. Makes a three. You know, the... the the tenor of this game will change if they can do that. Now, it's up to Kentucky to stop that with this lead. You saw the bcr has got four. Lee's got four. Lee's going to stay in the game right now. And Allen at the free throw line for Duke. He's not having the, the kind of night that he enjoyed in the first two games of the season. Although, again, the level of competition is much higher than him, obviously. Well, he has really struggled, but you give credit to the defense of Kentucky. They've been terrific on him. How good has Tyler Eulis been tonight? You can't speed him up. Like, he's going to go at his pace, and there's not really nothing you can do about it. He's been terrific. He is keeping Duke at arm's length right now. Ingram lean that shoulder in and gets called for the foul, his fourth. Frustration right now for Duke and a lot of emotion here in this early season matchup of college basketball powerhouses. Kentucky and Duke giving everything they have here at the United Center. And right now it's the Wildcats enjoying a 12-point lead. Teaching them to be a great teammate, to care about others more than you care about yourself. Teaching them what joy is, true joy, and then coming together and understanding character matters. We do those things, we'll be one of those last teams standing because that's the approach we take every year. Well, today at Shoot Around, the Kentucky players had a very special visitor, Cal's former player, Derek Rose, obviously currently playing for the Chicago Bulls. He came over here, called up Cal this morning and said, hey, I want to come by and talk to the players. He pulled them aside during Shoot Around and said, hey, listen, I know what you guys are going through. I know how tough Coach Cal can be on you guys. 
but he loves you and he's doing it for a reason. I think that's pretty good advice. What do you guys think? Well, he's certainly got a track record to put people into the NBA. And that's something that will definitely appeal to all, so many of the players on this Kentucky team. A ton of success, both in Memphis and even more so, obviously, in now five-plus years in Lexington. They've got a 12-point lead on Duke here in the first game of the State Farm Champions Classic with Michigan State and Kansas still to come tonight from Chicago. And Duke had a little bit of chance to, to put a run together, and Kentucky just thwarted it. Now they've got the Wildcats have a chance to stretch this lead out. Okay, Grayson Allen, Brandon Ingram combined two of 16 from the field. Yes. Not going to win doing that. Shot clock down to seven to Murray. Got to use the screen from Lee. Splits the defense, floats it up, and Poitras slams it home. Are you kidding? That's great coaching. That, you think you think John Calipari and his staff spent a lot of time teaching Jamal Murray that move? <laughs> Fifth assist of the night for Murray. Jones short on the three. Murray with a rebound, and he's pushing it. Another breakout. Euless. Another lob. Oh, boy. I don't know if anybody in America could have finished that, but Marcus Lee came close. Nice crossover by Thornton. And Emil Jefferson with a putback. With Kentucky a chance to stretch that lead out. Duke winds up getting the layup. One of the few poor decisions trying to throw that lob. What a play by Jamal Murray the last time down the floor. Murray with 13 points and five assists in the game. This is an unbelievable piece of ball handling to split that, split that trap off the ball screen. Behind the back. Goes behind the back and then the lob as you help up. Oh, what a great play. And if you would see with the guys like Poitras and Lee and Lavissiere, I mean, you throw it up to the rim. More than often, somebody, more often than not, somebody's going to go get it. That's Duke's first fast break basket of the game. First of the game. And it brings them back within 10. There is still time left. Six minutes of the game. Well, with the way Duke can shoot it, there is plenty of time left. Briscoe fouled by Allen. Briscoe added a little bit when he made contact with Marshall Plumley. These guys need to keep their composure. Roger Ayer is going to talk to Briscoe about it. Got the mouth guard in now. Oh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> Never mind. Now he does. There it is. That's the first time because, you know, the it has been in the whole Yeah, And the free throw line's a dangerous place. Exactly. you got to watch yourself <laughs> as the free throw shooter because somebody's coming to get you. <laughs> Shannon, if you talk to Briscoe after the game, we need to know. He's got some toughness in him, though, doesn't he? He's a player now. And this whole backcourt. Kentucky, there's not a, I'm not sure there's a better backcourt, and there's certainly not one that's better off the dribble. One shot, straight in. One. Two freshmen, Briscoe and Murray, and the sophomore, Ulis. All three of them are in double figures tonight for Kentucky. Plumlee down with another rebound. Lee got his arm caught. Plumlee might have been hanging on to it with uh, his right arm, but that was not where Marcus Lee wanted to be. That was a, a bad mistake. That's going to end his night. Yeah, that's a bad mistake to put yourself in that position. Yeah, there's, there's just no reason to go go for that ball and you let Duke walk 90 feet down to the other end and put two free throws up without any defense on you and to lose a player that has played maybe his best game in a Kentucky uniform. So Lee fouls out and they are working on Briscoe again. He has gone to the bench with what we were told was a calf cramp. Lovely misses the front end for the offensive rebound for Jefferson. And again, no block out by Kentucky. It's not physical. Thornton slipped. Plumley. What a great move. He's having himself a night. He's got a career high already 
in rebounds and blocks, and he's one point away from tying his career high in points. How about his parents after having Miles Plumley, Mason Plumley, now Marshall Plumley? I think they've attended more Duke games than anyone. <laughs> this is the eighth and final year that at least one Plumley will play for Duke. Fifth year senior Marshall Plumley. Yeah, I think the last time there wasn't a Plumley on the lineup was 1966 <laughs> when Bob Verga and <laughs> Jack Marin were playing. Marshall Plumley goes to the line to shoot. shoot. Go to Shannon. Yeah, Dan, you can see Isaiah Briscoe. He's in a significant significant amount of pain over there on the bench. It really looks like they've been trying to work out a quad cramp. I was even watching him when he was up on the free throw line. You could really see that he was fighting through some discomfort and favoring that left leg. All right, Shannon, thank you. Plumley misses them both. As he continue to work on Briscoe, he's had a very effective night for Kentucky. But there was a lane violation, get another free throw. Mm -hmm. Plumley knocks down the second now with a timeout called by Mike Shashevsky. With a 10-point deficit, 534 to go in the second half here with game number one at the State Farm Champions Classic. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. The committee that brings you what you want every Tuesday night. The College Football Playoff Committee meeting in Grapevine, Texas. And we will all find out exactly what they have decided for this week. As the ranking show, the Top 25 ranking show comes your way live from the United Center right here. See Herbie in the background there and David Pollock. The other two, I don't know who the other two guys are. But they you don't? I think they're important. They sign your rather large yeah. checks. <laughs> they tell us where we're going, and they tell us when we'll go. Mark Rose and Lee Fitting, two of our bosses at ESPN. This is Jay Billis's top four right now. you got Oklahoma in the fourth spot. Which means it's the absolute gospel. I think Alabama is the best team in the country. Clemson, number two. Ohio State. And then I've got Oklahoma in the number four spot. Baker Mayfield has been phenomenal. That when they had over Baylor, I think put them in there, and I think they're going to stay there. I think this is going to be the four we're going to see at the end of the year. That's Take fine. that, Herb Street. We'll, <laughs> we'll find out what the committee says. Not long from now, between this game and the Kansas-Michigan State game tonight here in Chicago. Ten-point lead, Kentucky, less than five and a half to go. But Marcus Lee has fouled out. Isaiah Briscoe's getting a cramp work done on the bench. This is an important possession for Kentucky. They need a score here. Eulis throws it up and in. 14 for Eulis. How about that? I mean, Duke had to feel like they've got an opening here. You know, Briscoe's getting worked on on the sideline. You got Marcus Lee having fouled out. Allen, that's the shot he has not been able to hit tonight. This time, though, he did draw a foul. I think they got Labissiere. And they, that's it for him, right? That's yep. four. So that makes it five. He just brought that arm down, a little bit of contact. And that's going to end it for him. That'll bring Humphreys back into the game. So Lee and Labissiere both fouling out tonight for Kentucky. And running out of big bodies. Just got to go straight up. Bringing that arm down and just making a tad bit of contact. I mean, it's, there's not much there, but... Two of the big men have fouled out for Kentucky. Humphreys and Poitras both in the game with three right now. Another missed free throw. Allen had a, a tough night. He, Allen came in averaging 27. Ingram came in averaging 18. Look at these numbers. Yeah, Kentucky has just thrown a blanket over these two. The one thing the Wildcats do not want to do as this clock gets toward three zeros. They don't want to put Duke on the free throw line, and they don't want to give them open catch-and-shoot threes. Duke just 12 for 21 from the free throw line. Murray wide open. Count. 
You give him time to set his feet. That was just way too easy. Miscommunication on that screen by Duke. Murray was wide open. Look at that much time to shoot in the horse game, and he's not missing that. 16 for Jamal Murray. A lot of traffic here for Thornton, and it's Kentucky ball. You spin, the ball's gone. Just a poor decision by Derek Thornton, the freshman. He reclassed. He should be a high school senior, as should Jamal Murray. Yep. Eulis stops on a dime and finishes. What a night for Eulis. I'll tell you what. People say he's not big enough. If you're good enough, you're big enough. And he's good enough. What a terrific player Tyler Eulis is. Big Blue Nation on its feet in many parts of the United Center right now. Plumlee almost lost it. Now he drives, has it blocked. Jefferson there. A 14-point lead, though, still for Kentucky with 3.38 to go. Duke had some moments in the second half where they looked like they were right on the verge of a run, just couldn't get over the hump. Well, Humphreys. Kentucky answered it every yep. time. And a Duke foul underneath to send us to a timeout. Tyler Eulis, the sophomore from here in Chicago, has just controlled this game. Ball screen getting down, he splits it, stops, gathers himself, and shoots over a bigger defender. Terrific, just terrific. To the tourney presented by Sonic continues with the second game tonight for the State Farm Champions Classic. It'll be number four, Kansas, and number 13, Michigan State. Spartans coming off a Final Four appearance a year ago. Both of these teams certainly with Final Four aspirations this year. Sparty is in the house. Denzel Valentine and company ready to take on the Kansas Jayhawks. 30 minutes after the conclusion of this game. One of the great things about this event, whether it's in Chicago, Indianapolis, New York, all four schools well represented in the stands. Oh, these four, these four fan bases show up and they're loud. Hey, Kansas has terrific depth. It's a really good basketball team and it has a chance to be the best team out of this whole group. What about a thought on Sheck Diallo and, and what eventually may or may not happen with his eligibility? I'm really surprised. You know, I'm a, I'm a believer in rules, but I, I think it's ridiculous the way Sheck Diallo has been treated. Uh, he needs to be cleared and cleared right away. He's a good student. He's proven it. And the idea that the NCAA is going back to his sixth grade courses in Mali is absurd and it's embarrassing. A freshman, 6'9", very talented and would make a deep Kansas front court that much deep. Two deep teams, actually, the Jayhawks and the Spartans, and more experienced than both of these teams. Not as many freshmen. What a great rebound by Emil Jefferson. Jefferson's got 14 rebounds now in the game. Poitras called for the foul. That's his fourth. And look at some of the areas where Kentucky has dominated tonight in the paint off turnovers fast break points I mean, in the first four or five minutes it was the Marshall Plumley offensive rebound and putback show and ever since then Kentucky has just been off to the races whenever they've picked up a loose ball or got a steal or a long off a long rebound well those offensive rebounds from both Emil Jefferson and Marshall Plumley kept Duke in it yep. Otherwise, they'd be getting completely blown out of this game. And John Calipari was talking to his team at the shoot-around. He, he didn't believe that Duke could guard them off the dribble and told his team so. Now, maybe Duke can, but they haven't. And everything that John Calipari told his team has come true, and they've done. Now, the one area where Kentucky can get a lot better, you know, this team can get much more physical. I think they can get better on screens. They really don't hit bodies on screens. And don't come to a stop. They need to get body contact on screens, and they can be much more physical and much better on the glass as a team. They always will have multiple ball handlers in the game. Eulis and Murray right now. Tipped out of bounds by Thornton. Nine to shoot. They figure to be a large, uh, a hard team to make a comeback against because of the ball handling, good free throw shooters, that sort of thing. And when they, when they move the ball from side to side and move the defense and then attack off the dribble, there aren't a lot of defenders that can stay in front. And there certainly aren't teams that have three guys that can stay in front of their matchup. So they're going to put you into rotation. And if they put you into rotation, it's going to be difficult. If they put you into scramble, you're done. Now 
College Football Top 25 ranking show coming up between games tonight. Then Kansas and Michigan State as Euless comes up with a steal to just offset the turnover he committed at the other end. What a play by Tyler Euless. Now Grayson Allen got past him and he retreated to take the pass away. He's something else. He really is. What a, what a great college play. And I think he's going to be an NBA. He's playing in the NBA. And he's played every minute of this game here. I wouldn't take him out. Matthews getting some run now with Briscoe on the bench. Murray with a shot clock running down. Has his pocket picked by Jones. And Jefferson running the floor and laying it in. Still an 11-point deficit under two minutes to go. Well, Kentucky's certainly not trying to stall, but they do want to use clock. And John Calipari was trying to call a timeout. He can't do that anymore. The players have to do it. And one of the new rules this year, coaches cannot call live ball timeouts. A bit of 47 to go. And an 11-point lead for Kentucky as we send it back to the studio for an update with Chris Cotter. All right, guys, just want to update you on Maryland and Georgetown. Right now on ESPN News, although it's moving over to ESPN2 here in a minute, that's Rasheed Suleiman right there feeding Michael Tchaikovsky with the bucket. Close game, Maryland on top by three over on ESPN2. Chris, thank you. Great action, really, from last night. The tip-off marathon going all through the night, through the morning, and now culminating with a number of games this evening, including Kentucky Duke and Kansas-Michigan State here tonight. Well, Tyler Euless in so many ways has controlled this game. He's controlled the ball offensively, but you can see when Isaac Humphrey steps up after Grayson Allen got past Euless, Euless just drops back in anticipation to steal that ball, a little pocket pass. That's a big-time play defensively by Tyler Euless. Risco back into the game for Kentucky. Euless inside, no. And a foul going against Duke. Looked like they got Chase Jeter on the foul. But there's Euless, the smallest man on the floor, seeking out the body of a bigger defender and drawing the foul to get to the free throw line. Euless was born in Lima, Ohio, but he calls Chicago home. He moved to Chicago with his sophomore year of high school, played at Marion Catholic, and has a lot of friends and family in the house here tonight. One of the things he's doing so much better than he did last year is using a little runner floater in the lane. He's always under control. He's got a great demeanor on the court. His leadership is invaluable. And the three guards, Euless, Murray, and Briscoe, have 46 points, 18, 16, and 12 for Kentucky. Thornton doesn't get the bounce. Jefferson having a big, big night. That's his 15th rebound and his 16th point. That's three double-doubles in a row for Emil Jefferson. What a hard worker he is, and he's, a, he's an outstanding defender. His ability to guard ball screens and also to guard in the post. Mike has got to be happy with the way some of the upperclassmen have played tonight. And not Lee Jones and Jefferson, but the, uh, the kids have not been as good as some of the kids for Kentucky. Yeah, I'm not sure he's going to be happy with much. Yeah. A terrible pass. No angle at all. He's leading Chase Jeter essentially out of bounds, even if he caught it. So and that's just a youthful mistake. So Duke will suffer its first defeat of the season. They'll drop two and one. A look at some of the other games out of conference games coming up for Duke, including a potential matchup with Wisconsin on Sunday. Also for the ACC Big Ten, they'll play Indiana, and then a neutral court matchup with Utah. That game's in New York City on the 19th of December. One of the great things about the Champions Classic is you learn where your weaknesses are. And Duke has learned a lot of where its weaknesses are, and Kentucky exposed quite a few of them. Cheater with a rejection. Some of Kentucky's have been exposed too, but this is, this is going to be a really good team. And a shot clock violation against the Cats with just 14 seconds to play. For John Calipari, the Cats will go to 3-0 and pick up a win over the fifth-ranked team in the nation. Thornton. Jefferson trying to gather it's still loose and that's going to be all Kentucky with an 11 point win over Duke led by Tyler Eulis as the Wildcats beat the Blue Devils 74 to 63 in the first game tonight here in Chicago
Eulis leading the way with 18 points and six assists. A, a very good effort by the Wildcats tonight. Yeah, Kentucky's guards dominated the game. Their transition ability, they guarded pretty well. And after an initial flurry by Duke on the glass, you know, Kentucky got a lot tougher. It was just, it was Kentucky blue all game long. They had 17 offensive rebounds. They had 18 fast break points to just four for Duke. They capitalized on Duke turnovers. They really took advantage of what Duke gave them. Kansas, they're chomping at the bit. The Jayhawks want to get going as they get ready to take on a Michigan State in the second game here tonight. But first, we've got to hear from Shannon Spake. She's got Tyler Eulis and Jamal Murray. Well, I'm sure this is a very satisfying moment, especially for the hometown boy. You know, you come in, have a performance like this. How responsible did you feel to come in here and set the example for the younger guys on this team tonight? Um, very responsible, you know, being here last year and just, you know, having so much experience, I just have to come try to lead these guys. You know, Jamal did a great job handling the pressure. Uh, we had guys in foul trouble. I like how Isaac stepped up. Alex played like he did before he had the injury, and I felt like we came together as a team. You know, you're starting to sound a little bit like Coach Calipari. <laughs> I wouldn't say all that. All right, for you, obviously a great night for you. I, Coach talked a lot about lessons. Tonight would be a big lesson night. What do you think you guys learned in this game this evening? All right, we learned that we can get it done as a team, and, you know, everybody does the role in their part. You know, we're able to get the win against any team in the, in the league. So, you know, we, we, did, we did our thing tonight, and, um, you know, excited to have more games. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, Shannon, thank you. Jamal Murray, Tyler Eulis, and the Wildcats beat Duke 74 to 63. Coming up, Michigan State ready to go. Kansas has already taken the court. Game two of the State Farm Champions Classic is 30 minutes away. For Jay Billis and Shannon Spink, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, the college football playoff top 25 is coming up right after this break.